Okay, so I've had the DeskPi Pro case, uh, well, since before they were released, they sent me a prototype model. And uh, it's worked fine for me. I use it as my headless uh, Raspberry Pi because it's got some passive cooling in there and it works really, really well. But uh, they've sent an upgrade for people who are having problems with it. And uh, this is the pack that they sent as an upgrade. I guess if you buy a new one, it will just be the new modded device. Um, but because mine was the old original one, they've swapped some things out. So as you can see here, parts list, new USB HDD board, new AUX board, new USB to USB plug, new back IO board with FPC cable and screws. So the features AS Media IC for SATA SSD HD support Raspberry Pi USB boot, reduction of 2.4 GHz electromagnetic interference, and optimized always on function. So here's all the bits you get. You've also got a stand here as well. This is just a sort of aluminium stand that you can stand it up in. Uh, there's a screw. There's this little part here, which I've had a look in the instruction to see where it goes. It goes kind of just above the USB sockets. There's the, uh, the USB A to A adapter, and you can see it comes with all the board and everything. And if I flip it over, you can see all the connections that, that plug in. And if we look down this way, you can see the SATA connection for the hard drive in the bottom there. Right, so let's have a look at my old board. I think I'll put the camera on the tripod. So I've already taken the screws out uh, so I can take the Perspex bits off. So this is the front. And the back just pops, pops off. And everything is held really solidly in place because there's screws going through the bottom part here. Uh, so I need to take all of these out to be able to get the whole lot out. All right, so that should slot out now, and it does. And there's some basic instructions here to assemble it. So it is definitely shaped differently. Uh, this part is a lot shorter. You can see here, this is a lot shorter but everything else seems to be pretty much in the same place, which I guess it would be because of the outside of the case. So I'm gonna to have to get these out. Can't believe how tight, some of this is really quite tight. I guess it'd probably be better if you had a proper tool. There you go, that's all of those bits. Now is there, yeah, there's a ribbon cable here that I need to be careful of. That's it. So it flips up to get that out. So that should, yeah, that slots out now. So that should just sort of tease apart now. So I reckon, so these two are gonna to have to come out, these two here. Now it's coming. Oh, and we've got another, is that the fan? Yeah, so there's fan connections there, but they're not gonna come up, or are they? They might come up. Without, without moving this upwards. No, that's gonna to have to be looser as well. Possibly not all the way. And there we go. Now we've got something different for the fan uh, because I've got pins here. Whereas when I look at this one, I've got this little connector. And this could be because I had such, a, such an old board um, that that could be the reason that I had that instead. So now I've, got, I've also got a loose, loose fan because it's not pushed on now, which is understandable. So that's got to be screwed back onto there, but that will then, that will then pull that down. I'm going to put some more thermal paste on there just to make a better connection. I'm not that worried about the, about the fan. Of course I could power the fan from the GPIO pins. What would stop me from doing that? I know that um, the DeskPi Pro case has software to be able to regulate the fan, but it's such a quiet fan, I'm not too worried about it if it's always on. Not quite sure why I've got this long ribbon cable, because I don't have it on the other one, and I don't see where it would fit, because that the Pi would go like that, unless that is just some sort of shield. Oh, it's just a shield, it looks like. So I don't, it looks like I don't have to plug it in. I wish I had more instructions, but it's quite, you know, this is part of it. You just sort of experiment with it to try it out. So that's gonna go all the way up there like that. So I kind of, I suppose I could go in underneath and put this back on. I probably didn't need to take these off in the first place anyway. These are, I, I haven't looked online. 
um, but these are the instructions I've got, literally just that little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna put some more thermal paste on. Let's give that a clean off. So I've cleaned off the thermal paste mostly from here. And, and off this one as well. I hope there's some thermal paste left in here. I think I got this with my um, the salvo case. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. I think I've probably got one more go in that one. Pop that on, I can feel that's touching the thermal paste. So they've done these really tight. So when I look through, I can see that's nice and snug on the CPU there. So there's a new bit in here, this sort of T-shaped bit, and I guess it's in there so it doesn't get, get distorted in transit. Um, but that goes over the top of the USB like that. That's what the picture shows like. Yeah, so over the top of the USBs. Um, so I guess that's where this comes in. So this ribbon has got like some sort of shielding in there. So that can go over there. But then I've got to get this all lined up. So let's try and get the headphone jack in first. Yeah, that's good. Spin that around so we can see all the connections are going in at the right place. Let's get that fan cable out of the way. Yeah, it's nice and firm. So that, that's holding that on really nicely. There you go, so you can see that's all in. So. Yeah, it looks like this doesn't actually serve a purpose other than to do that bit of shielding. Let's pull that over there so it's it's definitely covering over. And then this little ribbon needs to go in. So these fan cables actually do go in here, they fit all right. Uh, and there's a negative on that side, so I need the black on the outside and the red on the inside. So. So I need to now put it inside the case. So it's gonna be with the, the fan obviously here. Let's bend that around and slot that in. There we go, and hopefully all this will still line up. Yeah, that one's gone in. Once you've got one in, you should be all right with all the others. Yeah, that's all the screws in and everything looks nice and secure. I've got that protected bit around the top there. So that's the back plate all connected. This looks a bit skew with, but I think it's probably going to be all right because there's a bit of flex to them. Oh yeah, that's gone in fine. And uh, so the SATA drive is going to go in there. I need to work out what operating system, because this is a 2 gig Pi, uh, I'm not going to put a 64-bit operating system on it because they tend to run slower. So I've currently got MX Linux on this white 32 gig SSD, so let's use that one. So, might have been worth keeping the case open before I did this. Oh no, that went all right. There you go, so you can see the, the SSD is in there. Pop this front plate on. There you go, that's, that's gone on fine. Different screws on the one that was released. I think they're black screws on the one that was released. So that's in. This is the little stand. So if you were gonna use the stand, you basically put them two side by side and then squeeze that in uh, and then that stands up like that. I'm not gonna squeeze mine in because I'm not gonna use it with that. I'm gonna leave it flat down. So let's plug this in. Uh, or oh, I need to shut down Twister first. Uh, so I don't need the micro to, US, uh, to HDMI adapter now. Uh, and I think it's the one nearest to the USB-C is the first port like it is on the Pi normally. So plug in the USB-C and uh, mouse keyboard. I guess I'll plug that in the back into one of the USB 2 sockets. Do I need to plug anything else in? Uh, Ethernet, I suppose. Oh, I, actually, let's use Wi-Fi. Uh, although I'm in the same room, but uh, Wi-Fi was one of the things it was supposed to fix. So let's power it up. There you go, that's booted up MX Linux. Let's just log in. 
and check that the Wi-Fi is working. We can see that the drive is working. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is now connected. I've just set that up. You can see it's connected now. Uh, so let's click on here because there's 135 updates needed. And let's upgrade. Put the password in. Okay, so it's much later um, than the previous part of the video. I was playing around with it. I was running YouTube continuously and uh, the temperature was going up to about 58, 59 degrees, something like that. Uh, the fan hasn't come on. I even ran handbrake, got it up to about 80 degrees and the fan still didn't come on. So those connectors that I connected it to aren't the ones for the fan. As I say, this was a prototype case, so it might be that it's different for the ones that they actually sold out to people. So I did a test on terminal, um, which is LSUSB-T, to see if this is a mass storage device or the much faster UASP device. Now, it actually is a mass storage device, uh, which means that potentially it could have been faster with a different adapter in there. Not that it's slow, um, and my Samsung bar adapters that I use are mass storage, and I actually find them quite snappy. They're definitely better than uh, SD cards, but when you've got an SSD drive, it could be faster again. After I'd done the test, uh, so after I'd found out this was mass storage, I was checking through my comments on the video I did earlier on, which was Raspberry Pi News, and Keith Taylor had said uh, they swapped out the J Micron for the AS Media Disc Controller, but they've chosen the ASM1153 and not the 1153E. So it's not that it's slow, but it definitely could be faster. So let's do a speed test on this with it inside the DeskPi Pro case. So if I launch Diagnostics and do Run Tests, so there you go. So that was nice and fast. So if I do Show Log. So 114774 for the sequential write speed, which is pretty decent, um, but the random speeds are slower than I would expect. Even though this is a cheap SSD drive, they are just a bit slower than I would expect. So let's get that up again, and uh, I generally do this three times and then pick the sort of best one from the three. Let's get that second test. Uh, so we only need this bit. Copy that and pop it in this document. And we can have a look at it side by side. So 115, yeah, slightly faster, slightly slower on the random read speed, but pretty much, yeah, pretty similar. I'd probably stick with the, the first test in that instance, uh, but let's do one more, a bit slower on that one, uh, on the uh, sequential, but I think I'm probably gonna go with the first test anyway, because it had the best random, uh, yeah, they're the best random read and write. So let's go with that one. Let's delete these others. And let's save that. I'm guessing that's saved. Let's do check files. I like this file manager because uh, it only needs one click. So if I do uh, pi, oh, it's already on the right one. And documents, you just click it. There's no double clicking involved. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, uh, but when I'm using my NAS drive, it comes up quicker because less double clicking. Uh, so let's shut this down. And we need to connect the drive, but using a different cable. So I'm going to use this CSL cable, which is the one I generally use uh, as a USB SATA cable. I've got speed tests on that separately. Uh, so I need to turn that off. Switch it off on here. I can't remember if I need to get the... I think I can take the drive out through the front. Soon find out. It's a really nice feeling case. It's nice and solid. Yeah, there's my drive. So I can hopefully tease that out. There you go. That's not the easiest thing to get out. But that's not the intention, obviously. Uh, so I need to unplug. So on the back here, if I show you, there's the, the USB adapter. So I can basically take that out, plug my CSL cable into the bottom one, or middle one, and then pop the drive there. And then let's start it up. So now I'm running with the CSL cable. Uh, so let's open a terminal and do that same test. And you can see here, uh, driver UAS, and that's what we want it to be. 
uh, that's showing that it's the faster type. And Jeff Gearling did a really good video on this a while ago now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely worth looking out for. If you're buying a separate adapter, it does make a difference. So let's do Raspberry Pi Diagnostics again. So when we look at the two together, so sequential write speed is slightly faster on the UASP. Uh, the random write speed is nearly double and the random read speed is three times the speed. So way, way faster on the randoms and uh, that, that is what makes an operating system feel more snappy. Sequential write speed is fine, but uh, it's the randoms that are better. So definitely from those results, uh, a UASP cable is going to give better results. Okay, so I hope all this helped. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.